guys, they do magic. magic. They are the magic guys. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to episode 163 of the Magic Guys, where Doug has uh, grown some extra digits. What a lucky man for sleight of hand that oh, must be. Enough. This is. How are you doing, <laughs> fellas? Welcome. Uh, Good to have him back. And to my hey, to my to my left to my left we got Mr. Nick K. Welcome to the show, friends. Oh yeah, and look, the crew is back and for a fun episode. And you know, Doug, it's good to have you back, my friend. Thank you. How are good you? to be back. Yeah, nice. It's uh, it's been too long. It's been too long. Look, and we got uh, all our friends in the chat as well. Uh, Thomas Conga, Zuma, Zuma G Music looks like a new one. Thank you for being here. I feel like our guest might have brought uh, them on. Tim Askin, Randall Hardo, Noah the Magician. What's up, everyone? This is just, you know, so much fun. Nick, what's going on with you today? Just another day living the dream, friends. Um, you know, every Tuesday. That, sound, that didn't sound believable that time. That was like Nobody a oh, me it's Tuesday. Me. Let me phone Nobody in this me. response. Yeah, <laughs> living the dream, friends. <laughs> <laughs> I just got out of my coffin and I'm living the dream, friends. <laughs> That's no one believes me in the no one believes me that I have this amazing, wonderful life that I get to do magic and 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 smile all day and take care of myself and my family and hang out with my bros on my podcast. Like I'm I'm just surviving and thriving. It's a good life. It is a good life. That and... was more believable. That was that was believable. That's mm. the dream, is it not? Yes. I, I think yeah, we'll just we believe you and we'll move on. So it's good. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> uh, um, and so today we are joined by a guest. We haven't had a, a guest for a couple of episodes, um, and now we have a we have a banger. And I got to say, this guy is a two time fool us trophy winner, but he just fooled us for a, a third time backstage. So we need some kind of trophy, I think, to be able to to give him. That was crazy. Um, and you guys don't get to see it, uh, <laughs> but we got some good stuff in store anyway. So. Uh, Doug, have you had any run-ins with uh, this gentleman before, like being in the U.S.? I mean, I assume the U.S. everyone runs into each I other think in the Brian street. Was but... at tricks? I'm <laughs> sure I saw Brian roaming around there, but uh, I don't think we had any session time at that convention. And if I'm wrong, you know, I have short-term memory loss. So what are you going to do? What? <laughs> I, was, I, was, <laughs> no, I, you know, I just took that seriously. I didn't want to make fun of your uh, no, your problems. Okay. You know, it's, it's totally <laughs> you made fun of. <laughs> no, but look, we're going we're to bring him on. Now this, so like I said, so he's a magician, right? He fools magicians. He performs shows. He does all the stuff that we want to be doing, but he also is a famous, what's the right word? He's a voice actor. He's an, everyone's heard his voice, but you don't know who he is. So he's like a famous, an infamous voice actor. Um, and we're going to talk all about that um, in just a second. So ladies and gentlemen, please help me in welcoming to the stage. It's Brian Saints. <laughs> Brian, are you there? Oh yeah, sorry, I was I was uh, staring at my fool us trophies. Yeah, I'm here, guys. <laughs> Good Welcome. to see I... everybody, and uh, especially Doug. You know, I mean, after you know, he and I sessioned a lot uh, at tricks. Um, oh yeah, that was a good time. About short term memory, so I, no, I'm just... <laughs> <laughs> Doug, I don't think we sessioned. I, I think I think memory's good. Yeah, cool. It was, you know, so much going on at that convention, the greatest time. convention on the planet, and it's uh, hard to get everything in, I guess. I uh, know. It's it's a great convention. Yep. So. Tricks. We need some good conventions in Australia. We're missing out. Do you go to Magic Live, Brian? Uh, I, so I've been to Magic Live once, um, and this uh, this past time I've, I've Stop by. I, I told my wife she was with me because, uh, if you know, Fool Us was taping during Magic Live. And actually, the day that I arrived uh, in Vegas was the final day of Magic Live. So I told my wife, I said, let's let's pop over to the Orleans just just for a minute. We're not I mean, I'm not going to go into <laughs> sessions because I'm not registered. But I said, let's we'll see some friends. 
it, well, I'll see some friends in the lobby. Uh, so, uh, but she tagged along for it. So it was great to, to catch up. Today I got home. divorced. <laughs> What's that? That's yeah. the day I got divorced. I was absorbed yeah. into the convention, never seen for us. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah. we went in and, um, you know, and it was, uh, it was kind of a fun thing because, you know, a lot of magicians had been there, you know, the whole time. And they said, wow, I haven't seen you around. I said, well, I'm actually, uh, I'm, I'm not here for Magic Live, which usually was a follow-up question saying, oh, you, do you have a project over at the Rio? <laughs> <laughs> what a flex. How yeah. hard was it not to tell everyone that you just... No, 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 no. I, don't, I don't have that. No? <laughs> no problem, right? You're just so used to secrecy Man. as a magician. Well, I watched that clip earlier today. You fold the pants off me. I hadn't seen that Rubik's Cube routine, and uh, what a oh, brilliant right. piece that was. It's uh, yeah. the integration with the green screen. Just like that level of thinking for this, uh, you know. It fooled me so bad I had to make a video reacting to it, and that's kind of how we've started yeah. this friendship and now are on the podcast. And we found out in amongst that, that we have mutual friends like Brendan Dooley from New Zealand and things like that. Yeah. Brendan who, yeah. who we've had on the show. Um, and so, yeah, man, like, so let's just dive into that first. I suppose that's the sure. obvious thing that people want to hear about is, is fool us like going on it twice. Um, one question, what yeah. was your choice to not have, spectators on stage to do the magic too i noticed in both performances it's mainly you presenting a piece but like by yourself was uh, that a yeah, choice i don't think there was really a choice in that like well, maybe a little adjustment here uh, i don't think there's really a, a a big choice for me to do that except just it was in the effect that i was doing there was uh initially for the first time i was on um when i did the uh the phone charger um, mm -hmm. I, my initial thought was to have Allison on stage with me and it would be her phone that ended up being charged. And then I said, no, let's walk to Penn and Teller. Let's, let's get that shot of me standing there with Penn and Teller. Uh, you know, that's fine. And it turned out great because they, they had the camera directly behind them. So you see Penn, Teller, me, and then you see Allison reacting in the background. So it was a great shot of all four of us. Yeah. Um, and the second one just, uh, you know, there, there's really no, there's no time for someone to be up there. You know, there's nothing for them to do in my live show. Someone actually does mix the cube, um, in the, in the final phase, I have someone mix the cube and then it gets solved behind the folder again. And then the folder is closed and there's nothing there. So, um, but yeah, it wasn't really uh, some big conscious decision. Let's not have people helping me on stage or anything. It was just the uh, the effects I was doing did, didn't call for it. Did you cut that out for time reasons, the live solve section? Yes. So uh, um, uh, my first performance of the trick, which was uh, more than a year before Fool Us, I'd never thought of auditioning it for Fool Us, by the way. Okay. Uh, not sure why, just never did. Uh, ne never entered my mind. But I did the, the first performance of it a, about a year prior to auditioning it for Fool Us. And there was a moment where a person mixed the cube. And the overall routine probably went about six minutes. And it just felt sluggish to me. Yeah. But I think part of the reason why it felt sluggish is because the guy took the cube and he was mixing it. And then fell to the ground and the oh, no. completely shattered pieces came out, went everywhere. Um, and I don't know what the recovery is for that, but method wise, I was able to make it work. <laughs> um, but uh, yeah, so it really, it was a timing thing Yeah, to get rid of that. So for anyone who's like sort of thinking to go into the full us arena and, and compete like yourself, obviously you've had, tremendous success what advice would you have for anyone who's looking to either one put together a routine or actually perform when it comes to like what sort of pre-tips do you have with regards to actually getting on that stage sure sure you got to remember that it's tv uh, tv is very different from a live performance and i i had um uh, personally i i had 
no clue uh, or very little clue what the difference there was. Uh, you know, I worked with Brent Braun. And uh, of course, that, that's always uh, when people say, I want to go on Fool Us. I said, that's always a good starting point is Brent Braun. Um, mm. You know, he he's extremely knowledgeable, not only about Fool Us, but about magic on TV in general. And, uh, you know, time plays differently. Uh, you know, there you can have these wonderful pauses in a live theater show, these five second pauses where there's no sound, just the empty sound of a theater, you know, just very just dead quiet. You do that on TV and it lasts for right around two hours. Um, you know, there's just that you, you just have to think of it in those terms. I in my first performance, they cut out moments. They would flash to the audience to show them applauding simply to cut out me walking three steps. Uh, you know, never really realized that. But anyway, as far as actually auditioning something for the show, having a great hook is very important. Uh, you know, what you, the premise that you set in the first sentence is very important. Um, you know, this one for the, the cube trick, I'm going to show all of you a trick that can only be done on TV. That's what you kind of want to see what I'm talking about. Even yeah. if it's terrible, you still kind of want to know what I'm talking about. Um, but I think the biggest thing for me this go around was trying to be relevant in what I did. Um, there's Penn and Teller. There's uh, it's their show on national. It's fool us their show. It's national TV, and I'm taping it in Las Vegas. I addressed all four of these things in the routine in some way, shape or form to make it seem as though it really fit into the show. That it wasn't just, here's a random trick that doesn't mean anything. This had something specifically to do with the show. When I sent the audition, I even told the producers uh, in my email, I said, um, this is what the routine looks like in general, you know, my live show, but I want to personalize the script to be, uh, to fit in directly with the show and also with Penn and Teller. And also I have an idea for using the green screen uh, that I would like to share with you. <laughs> and that idea was to have the green screen change into, you know, different items. So smart. And, uh, love, and love, they, love that. Segment. As soon as they heard it, they, yeah, they said, sure. that's great. So. What a great just idea for magic on TV. It's like, you know, <laughs> Oh, love it so much yeah one of the best bits of advice i got with regards to the creativity is that you know if you if you play music you should be incorporating that into your to your magic like josh has a, a, a gymnastic background which is why he does backflips in his show and so forth it sure. seems like you're sort of mixing your skill sets as well other than magic what other amazing skill sets do you have amazing um i don't you gotta know. give us the line the, <laughs> this summer yeah this summer um Oh, no, come on. I, you got to give us more than that. This summer, <laughs> give, give us like a sentence, like a, something about how great hey, uh, Doug looks. Say, like, um, uh, just tell, just tell, to tell, tell us how good Doug looks today, this summer. That's going to be hard to do. Uh, yeah, I'm just trying to think of something to say. Uh, <laughs> there, there, yeah, one, I, yeah, one man. Yeah. In a strange pose with a strange finger up his nose. That wasn't meant to rhyme, but it worked. So you wow. have to my voice. My voice is is almost shot today for some strange reason. So damn it. I'm giving and, you my best. So I apologize. And now we got to send him a check for 10 grand just for those four <laughs> lines. <laughs> so yeah, what would I take it. away from this, friends, is that he has amazing voiceover skills, but I assume that you oh, have man. many more talents than just that, Brian. Why don't you tell us um, you know, a little about, about the voiceover work? as well as anything else that you might have with along with video editing skills, et cetera. Uh, see, I've been just one of these people that if I had an interest in something, I always pursued it at extreme levels. Uh, if it was just something I really liked, you'll notice, uh, let's see, you can't really see there, uh, hot air balloon poster, hot air balloon up there. Those have been on my wall. Uh, those have been in my room since I was four years old, both of those. Uh, I, really had an interest in hot air balloons. I became a student pilot before oh, I left high school. So I actually got to fly oh, wow. balloons. Uh, never went and got a full pilot's license or anything. Uh, I'm a huge music 
fan. So, so uh, I, but I play entirely by ear because I can't read music. So uh, sometimes that'll end up in my show somewhere. If there's a piano on stage, I'll find a way to work that in. Um, the video editing, I I'd always wanted to do that um, and uh, kind of be behind the scenes of, uh, of video. Really behind the scenes is something I love because I love creating. I almost love creating as much as I love being in front of the camera being on stage um but uh yeah that um i did some freelance producing and editing I did some for espn uh worked uh on some uh indie films you know smaller smaller parts but uh magic was just kind of the way for me to bring everything together just the acting and the the writing and the producing and directing and and uh editing and just everything I could kind of combine into magic. Um, and, uh, yeah, the voice acting just came out of nowhere. Oh, we got a finger. <laughs> oh, I, oh, I, I, I was like, I like it. you have a question. And I'm like, I have a question. How in the world? Um, <laughs> If you know, it skills, Drago is asking, um, did you have any control with regards to the editing of your act when it was being presented on full lust? Um, as far as uh, if, if you're referring to after the performance has been shot, um, I would say very little. Um, but I will also say that 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 team of people, they sincerely, sincerely want to make you look as good as possible. Um, That's great. And if something had happened, you know, if I had said something and I went, ooh, I don't like that line, I probably could have told someone as soon as because they'll, they'll they'll have you there for pickup lines afterwards you know pick up shots i could have probably told someone listen i really hate this line can i go back and do that part over and my guess is they would have absolutely done that but i didn't see my uncut performance um and get to say yes include this don't include that um but like i said these these people pour over mm. this uh, they pour over your your routine, your your performance, and they want it to look as good as possible. That's so That's great. Really, That's really yeah. refreshing, considering that we've heard nightmare stories with regards to the got talent sort of performances, and where they'll sometimes even sabotage your act, which a, a, a friend of mine had happened to her. So yeah, um, same thing. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, 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 and that's. You know, I'm not I'm not really going to go on, off on a tangent there because. Uh, mm. I, I haven't, you know, personally been involved. I, I was, I was somewhat involved uh, with an act because uh, if you know, Cleck Intos on the show on uh, America's Got Talent, I was the voice of Cleck Intos. I was going to bring that uh, up. You've been on AGT, but I've been on AGT, as your, your voice has. <laughs> just my voice has, yeah. So not me. Um, but that's crazy. How does that, that come is, about? Do they go? We need someone. We need a voice for this. How does that end up? To Brian Saint, I I happen to be friends with uh, with the people involved in that act. Um, I don't think it's any big secret, but I'm not going to say it here just in case it is. But I don't think right. it's any big secret who actually is the 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 uh, the one in the mask, and uh, you know, and his consultant. And those guys are just, uh, I mean, creative like no one else. Uh, but you know, they they're not from the U.S., so they needed a, a different voice. Uh, for their act. So, uh, but yeah, so uh, that, that's really how it got to me. It wasn't any big, uh, any big find. Um, they're just, just good friends of mine. They reached out to me and I said, heck, I would love to do that. Yeah. Um, so that's going to be weird watching yourself on AGT, but it's not you like in a uh, sense. It's about, <laughs> that's cool. It's, it's cool. about as weird as any, as anything else, you know, and anytime <laughs> I hear my voice because, it's, I mean, that's what it is. It's, it's voiceover. It's just strange to suddenly hear my voice come up. As far as voiceovers go, is there a sort of a, any, um, any sort of career bucket list that you wish you have done? Like, would you like to appear on an episode of The Simpsons or maybe feature in a video game of sorts? Is there anything like that that you have in your kind of career bucket list? Um, I would well, like to be Batman at some point. Yeah. I got to be Superman in a in a mobile app. I got to be Superman. Oh, um, and you, did, didn't you get to be a Power Ranger as well, Zordon? I got to be Zordon. 
That's the uh, in the power there. on the uh, there's a, an app of a certain uh, of a toy that you could buy this the legacy communicator, and you push the button and Zordon talks to you. And I, I need you to understand, I know nothing about Power Rangers. I mean, absolutely yeah. not. I never saw the show Power Rangers at all. And I got an I got an audition that was directly sent to me. So it wasn't a hey, this is going out to all the talent. It was directly sent to me and just a few others. And it said, um, you know, this is an audition for a Power Rangers toy for the voice of Zordon. And I, I, why did they send this to me? And they, they even <laughs> said, we think your voice would be great for the voice of Zordon. And I thought, okay. And they sent a clip or it's a reference clip from the show. And so I clicked on it and it was all, how many Power Rangers are? Is it four or five? At least four. At least four. I don't know. It was all the all the uh, the people in the in the uh, colored outfits. Uh, all the all the Teletubbies, as big yeah. as I can be, um, talking to this <laughs> giant head that was floating in the air like the Wizard of Oz. And I'm watching the whole clip, and they said it's a reference, and I went, "Which one is Zordon?" <laughs> <laughs> I, I really did not. I very seriously did not know, and so I'm literally googling, and and this is literally what I googled: which color Power Ranger is Zordon? <laughs> Didn't get a good response. Yeah. So then I just typed in Zordon, yeah. showed the pictures. Okay, well then that's okay. We'll use that one. That, that's that's the one it's going to be. Um, yeah, wow. So I tried to mimic the voice. I sent it and said, "This is hilarious." I mean, you know, this is absolutely hilarious. I can tell my kids for the rest of my life that I auditioned for the voice of Zordon. Uh, and that's just hilarious. And then about three hours later, I got an email and they said they gave me the part. Wow. Damn. And I thought, maybe well, it's what do because I, what do I do now. <laughs> maybe it's because of your, your unknowing of like the Power Rangers empire that you did get it because you weren't, there was no stress in your voice like, oh, this is a big deal or, you know. I, I had no clue. Um, You're just too cool I, for Zordon. I, I did. <laughs> no, it's but not it bad. It's just that, that's, I never watched a lot of sci-fi, anything. Uh, right. Star Wars was about my, my biggest jump to sci-fi. <clears throat> uh, my second biggest would be the Krypton scenes from Superman. Outside of that, my sci-fi knowledge is, doesn't exist. Um hmm. So that that's why I didn't know anything about Power Rangers, but I, I got to be Superman in the nap. I would love to be Batman. And I think also because I have doubled as his voice for some things, I would like to do, I would not mind doing an episode of Family Guy. Um, you know, oh, just, yeah. Because I've, uh, I've been used as Seth's voice on some things, including the, uh, the official Ted movie app that was put out by you. What? Uh, so I got to be the voice of Ted on that. Please don't ask. Uh, well, that, that's crazy. Well, we can okay. I, I have a question. Yes. Uh, you do, you, so you do a lot of stuff, but can I ask professionally, what is the ratio of, in terms of you making a living, what is the ratio of things that you do the most? Like, is it voice? Is it producing things? Is it magic? Oh, magic. What, is what's like the most of your time? Magic is it. Uh, okay. voiceover is, is great. I, and now I have agents with voiceovers, so I don't get sent, uh, you know, dozens of auditions a day where I have to weed through and go, yeah, that makes sense for me to do. No, this doesn't make sense for me to do. Um, now just pretty much everything I get sent is because they listened to my demo and went that he, he's, uh, he should, uh, audition for this. So, I feel like there, there's really not a lot of wasted energy there. Uh, you know, I can come in here into my office, sit down. I'm, my room is treated. You can't see it, but I have room treatment here. Uh, I can do, I can record on this mic. And, uh, and I don't even have to go into a studio. I have wow. Source Connect here so I can connect to studios around the world. And they record it on their end. I have to do no editing. Um, and so, wow. uh, so much That's big. A much easier, a much easier thing to do. Magic is probably where my passion is because, uh, as I say, Superman is, or sorry, Superman, voiceover is kind of my Clark Kent, whereas magic is my Superman. Uh, 
Um, nice. You What's know, your market, Brian? Where are you doing your uh, gigs? Like colleges, corporate, um, general, family shows? Pretty much mo most anything but kids shows. I'll say that the, the majority would be corporate. Yeah. Uh, from there, um, I'll do some house parties. I don't get to do a whole lot of them. Uh, I'll do a handful of uh, wedding receptions now and then. Are you working in the Charlotte area or you travel or? Well, that's a great thing. Um, I, I could do a lot of traveling, but you know, mm -hmm. now I have two kids. You may have heard one crying just a little while ago. Um, but uh, I have two kids now, so I, I would like to stay pretty much within driving distance. I guess everything's driving distance except Europe. I mean, that's a great area. Yeah. Char the Charlotte <laughs> yeah. is really a blossoming metropolis and then just the surrounding area. There's a lot of stuff going on in that you right. know, southeast area. It's just a few, you know, I, I try to stay within a few hour drive. Yeah. I'll, I'll do some, some events every year where I have to fly. Yeah. Uh, but I'm, I'm really trying to build a nice strong connection here within a couple of hundred miles uh, just in the southeast, it's it's. What great. about Scott's place, the Magic Canvas? Are you doing shows there ever? I, like, I love I'm what he's doing. Four shows there this weekend, so everyone yeah. fly to Charlotte. Yeah, so um, they have a, it's an intimate uh, space where they do magic and also yes. other art. Art. Uh, they, yes, they do. Um, they have uh, a sip and paint there, so you can. Yeah. Uh, you can do that, but on the, you know, Scott being as connected as he is. And then we're just uh, speaking of Scott Robinson, who has Robinson. a book with Vanishing Ink. Uh, yeah, it's pure imagination. Pure imagination, man. There we go. Scott knows me for every sale that happens from this day going forward, I get a commission. It's a good book. Um, it's a beautiful book, man. It's, it's a great book. Magic so strong. Yes, we're we're old. We go way back to like Cincinnati in the eighties. Scott and I, you know. We're yeah, back when he had the mustache back then. Yeah, back when he was the... <laughs> I, I I've only seen pictures. That's, that's yeah. Cool for me. He was slick, um, man. Slick Scott. <laughs> we got some uh, great questions coming in here too. Sorry, yeah. sorry. Was there I a, a, an ending? That there was so much alpha here. Uh, <laughs> I love all this alpha. <laughs> Thomas said, "I love all this alpha." So I they love the alpha, alpha or not. No, that's a good thing. It's a good thing. They can smell the testosterone through the episode. There was two good questions here. One was. Um, you mentioned having an agent for voice acting. Do you have an agent for Magic 2 or do you take care of that yourself? I, I have a couple of agents for Magic. Um, I have a college agent, uh, very specific just to the college market. Uh, she also does book uh, some corporate stuff as well. And then I have another uh, another agent uh, agency that does some bookings for me. But um, you know, this is my, this. Well, I don't know if this will make me sound really old or not, but this is my 23rd this is my 24th year uh, doing this professionally. Um, and Great. You know, it started when I was 16 and I've, uh, and I was terrible for a, for a good solid 10 years, at least I was really bad. Uh, and then, then I started uh, picking up a pattern and seeing what I need to be focused on. And I, I got, uh, I at least got adequate. So uh, I've, I've managed to build a really great client list uh, and I think, um, you know, I I've, think once you're on that full us stage, not just fooling them, but performing for Penn and Teller's audience, how great was that? Uh, <laughs> yeah, to, to a degree that, that does help. Um, so that, know, that I, is one of, sorry, that is one of the next questions was from Pasha. Yeah, did fool us boost your inquiries and opportunities? Did it raise your perceived value for clients? Sure. I, I think perceived value. I think, yes, that, that um, there's a great deal of street credit, I think, that comes with a national TV appearance. Um, forget about fooling them. You know, as, as mm, I tell yeah. anybody who wants to get on the show, your job is to get on there and make some great television. Yeah. Uh, if you can do that, it doesn't matter if you fool them. Uh, yeah. We can talk about Piff the Magic Dragon from now until eternity. Ooh. And oh, yeah. I mean, he didn't fool them, you know, when he was first on, but that. I mean, just set his career on fire. And so as far as what Fool Us has done for me, it, it, I may have increased my fee a little bit, but I tell people all the time, they say, oh, did you double your fee after you went on Fool Us? And I believe, and I, I, I truly believe this, if you can double your fee 10 seconds after you've been on Fool Us, 
then you could have doubled it 10 seconds before you went on fool us. Sure. Um, I, I think you were already at the level uh, that you needed to be, but I think fool us more than it gave you the street credit with everyone else. It gave you more confidence to raise your fee. Um, and I think, uh, I think fool us helps a lot of people just in that regard. It helps boost your own perception of your act. Yes. What you're saying. Very much so. Hmm. There we go. How great it was, was it to perform on that stage? Is it, uh, as you know, like ingratiating as an experience it is as when you're uh, on the show itself? Well, I tell you, Penn and Teller have, have really, they've been my favorite magic act for about 20 years. Uh, I, I think I started the way most people start where it was David Copperfield, it like lived in most of my headspace. You know, that when I thought about magic, I thought about David Copperfield. That was it. You know how uh, it was, boy, I would love to do a show like that one day. Um, eventually reality set in. Um, I realized I probably wasn't going to fly on stage or make, you know, national monuments disappear. So um, when I saw Penn and Teller and I walked out of their theater, and this is something I've told them, I, what was interesting was it was the first time I had ever really walked out of a theater and immediately thought to myself, man, I need to be more creative because I just saw the best creativity that I'd ever seen uh, when I first saw their show live. So, uh, so to be on their stage was uh, really, there, there couldn't be much more of an honor than that. Yeah, uh, to to be on. I'm thinking that's like a career highlight for sure. Very, very much so. And I'll 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 do a separate one only because we're we're on that topic. Um, I performed at House of Cards in Nashville, Tennessee, which I will say is an amazing venue. It may be my favorite of the magic venues. Uh, I, it, I was it, just using Joey at the uh, winter carnival there. <laughs> yeah. We in into that joint for sure. Oh, oh it's, yeah. it's an amazing place. It really yeah, is. I've heard it's, nothing but great things. It's like yeah. a, a magic castle too kind of situation. Yeah, well, you know, cause Joey came from the magic. Right. Castle, so yeah. it, it has that feel of the castle, but I mean that, and I took Keller's as well uh, as another one that I, I love in, in Erie. But when I was at, um, House of Cards, Joey comes up to me and says, uh, hey, just letting you know, Lance is going to be here tomorrow night. Ooh. And I said, I said, oh, cool. Lance, too. Because, <laughs> yeah. I mean, that, I'm not, You're not thinking, thinking that way. Yeah. I'm not thinking what he's about to tell me. So I'm thinking, oh, is Lance the owner of this place? Or, or you know, like, because he just said it so casually. He didn't include a last name. He said, no, Lance Burton. I said, really? And he said, yeah, he's he's heading to the convention in Atlanta. He's going to swing by here on the way. And they, he's, a, he's tried to come here many times, but he's actually made the dinner reservations. He's coming. And um, wow. the next night... I was backstage and couldn't help but peek through the curtains because I knew who was supposed to be at that particular show. And sure enough, there's Lance Burton wow. sitting in the audience. And um, Dang. I, I did my show and it, it, I was very happy with how the show went. Got a standing ovation from the audience. Nice. Lance was one of the first to stand up. Uh, wow. And what was so cool to me was, is you know, I, I had 19 years earlier. I, I looked at it. It was 19 years to the month, not the date, but the month. I was in Lance Burton's theater, giving him a standing ovation. I'm getting goosebumps here in this. Wow. So, so I really, I really wanted to hang out. I, I hung out there at his theater, you know, trying to find, is there some way to meet Lance or whatever? Didn't happen. <laughs> But after I met everybody who came through the line after my show at uh, House of Cards, Lance was still standing in the theater waiting for me. Uh, and we got to have this uh, cool conversation, you know, about five minutes just talking over the show. He was extremely complimentary. And uh, I mean, honestly, that was uh, that would definitely tie for uh, 
a very come full circle moment, uh, just like being on the Penn and Teller stage. So uh, th those would be my probably my, my big highlights uh, of my career in magic would be uh, Penn and Teller stage and Lance Burton stage. <sighs> Damn, but that that's I think that's a great segue to a segment we like to do since you've just shared like the best moments of a of a gig. Sure. Um, but we have we have one we have a segment where we talk about some maybe funny or um, weird moments that happen. So let's roll into our gig story. So gig stories is a section of the podcast where we like to talk about stories, whether while performing from our day to day or in our corporate shows. And we want to share those stories with you, our awesome audience, starting this week with our good friend, Josh Nabito. Fire away. I'm at the Theater of Magic last week doing some shows. I see this guy to my left and I'm, I forget the effect I'm doing. I think I'm doing a like a divine a name he's thinking of. He has the most luxurious hair I've ever seen on this this gentleman. And I decide to call him Fabio in the moment. I'm like, all right, so Fabio over there is thinking of a name. You know, everyone turns to look. They laugh because they realize why I called him that. I say I'm very jealous. And like, right, we do this effect. I'm not kidding you. The very next effect I do, I walk up to this Spanish guy. And I'm like, and what is your name, my friend? And he goes, Fabio. The room applauds. <laughs> I just take a bow and we move on. And that will never freaking happen ever again. Like, why did I decide to call him Fabio in a in a particular show where another guy had that name that I would like? That's just that to me is magic, and it was just the craziest moment in a long time. That's my story. That's a great story. <laughs> what do you I've got? got a relatable uh, idol oh, story. Duff. When Brian was telling his story about performing for his idol. At the Trix convention, I, I think it was 2013, as I walked out to do my performance segment, sitting right there in the front row, three feet from my face, is Harry Anderson oh. watching me do my act. And it, it was this man, Harry Anderson, that inspired me to become a professional magician, to become a street performer, come into New Orleans, where I did meet him, but I'd never performed close up magic for him. And uh, I was doing the three card Monty, my routine in that act. And that was certainly a highlight for me performing like here I am living this life with my childhood idol. Anyway. Yeah. So great. That's it's going great. to be a no cool moment. I wasn't that good. I didn't get a standing O from Harry Anderson. I was lucky to survive the ordeal that night, but yeah, it was cool. Yeah. <laughs> uh. And Nick, I mean, you got to have Teller watching you do close up when he was yeah, in town. Actually, that's that's, pretty that's wild. let's share that story. So um, Teller was in town, and we took him out uh, to the hot springs for for a weekend. So it's a couple hours drive out of town, down by the beach. Lots of cool hot springs, sort of watery numbers like spa and sauna. And, and Teller was just up for everything. He was the most fun, like uh, individual I've had I've hung out with in a very very long time. We're going from like like Turkish saunas where you can't even see more than a meter in front of you to jumping into like ice cold baths um, and doing all that. And we're, we're driving home and our community here is really tight. And and I, I love all my friends. They're all my community. I run an agency in which I employ them all. They're, they're, they're my bestest people in the whole world. And Teller was just like sort of in awe of this, this, this really lovely synergy we had in the car as we're all complimenting each other and so forth. And uh, in amongst that drive, he, he turns to me and says, uh, I want to see your magic. And I went, sure. Do you want to like, do you want to hang out and do a thing? He goes, he goes, I don't care. Just get it to me. And I'm like, okay, <laughs> um, what are you doing this evening? He's like, I'm going to go see the Harry Potter um, play, but afterwards I'm going to go to this bar. And I'm like, what's the bar? I'll meet you there. I'll, I'll come in my magic regalia. We'll do some magic. And so we rock up at the bar and bring all the magic friends with. And we just went round for round entertaining all of the uh, crew who were in uh, not only the Harry Potter mu uh, uh, play, but also the Hamilton musical. And so all the guys who were doing the backstage and the ropes and the lights and so forth all go to have a couple of drinks at this bar. And just for that evening, we were just rocking out, performing. And it was really, really sweet because... I heard some stories about Tell as he was visiting other magicians and and really gave him an earful as to like how they went about doing things. But he was watching me literally over my right shoulder. And I have video of this on my Instagram if you scope out Nick K Magic. And um, I'll put another post on there on my story so you guys can scope it out. But 
when someone like him is looking over your shoulder, watching your magic and enjoying it to the point he grabs you with both hands and just says, you are so effing good. Holy crap. Um, and I thought, isn't that sweet of this man to to give, be so encouraging? And then I found that afterwards, it's like, no, he tore shreds off this guy, this guy, and this guy. And I'm like, oh, great. Like, it was very, very flattering. So it's really nice when there's someone who, of, of that stature, looks at your work, your, your the stuff that you've worked on that is yours, not something that, like, you're not out there performing other beautiful pieces of magic that already exist, but stuff that you've, like, obsessed over for the past decade to make better and better and better and they acknowledge that and go i love your touches on this and the one thing that i love the most about that was anyone who has seen my lecture knows that the suit that i wear is highly customized to be able to achieve a lot of different effects and he politely wanted to know the secrets of the suit but the way he asked it was i would like you to tell me just one thing about your suit and i was just like what do you want to know and I, and so I just told him everything. I was like, here's the top. It's here. Here's this, that. Here's where the magnet is. Here's how I load stuff into this. Here's what I do to the sleeves. Here's the secret this. Here's the secret that. And he was just really grateful for it. And he, and in return, he shared some stuff that he was basically saying, like, I've never spoken about this particular technique at length. And well, there you go. There's a nice photo of Teller and myself um, on Josh's screen there. Uh, yeah, and in the, yeah, there you go. A little further up, that's literally him over my right shoulder at a bar, and it's just, it's just such a wonderful privilege to so great to be able to spend time with someone you know who's is that amazing? Like it is, it is great, and he's extremely kind, and um, it's really funny. I got I got really mad at him because he snuck off and paid for lunch, and um. <laughs> and that was before I knew what his net worth was. And I kind of forgive him now. <laughs> Cheeky bugger. <laughs> he drives a Tesla too. That I know. I drive a Tesla. We, we had that in common. Yeah. So yeah. That, that's that's a nice little gig story of uh, a wonderful moment hanging out with someone like Teller, an absolute giant in magic. Yeah. Hey, Brian, uh, what's, it, what's it like performing at the Magic Castle? The, I think my first time there... I, I don't know if I could really even remember what it was like because I was just so enthralled with the idea that this is the magic castle. <laughs> you know, I, I it was funny. The first time I ever went to the magic castle, I saw a show in the parlor. And you know, I mean, we saw shows everywhere. But when I went into the parlor, I looked at that room and I said, I would love to perform here. Yeah. And then when I walked in to the parlor to set up my show to perform, and that was close to 15 years later, uh, that was just a moment of, holy cow. You know, this is, uh, so, so to, I mean, what, what could I possibly say that any other magician that's performed at the castle couldn't I was, say? I was uh, thinking about the castle today because it's something it's on my bucket list. I haven't done it. I haven't really tried hard to get there. But then I was kind of thinking, man, that's a lot of work. You know, what are you doing? Like several shows a day, seven days in a row? <clears throat> I, I'll tell you what I would do. Um, I, I, that I, I learned my, I learned big time my first two times out there. Uh, really it was the second time that I was out there that I learned the most. Um, I did the late parlor and I am on the East coast. That's where I live on the East coast. And then I go out there to the West coast, three hour time difference. Now, 15 years ago, no problem. Let me take a nap and I'll be all caught up. You know, that, that actually doesn't happen uh anymore for some strange reason you know we just we did the the one hour time change uh just a, a couple of weeks ago and i'm still recovering i feel like um of course i could also be the three week old baby we have in the house you're on dad hours feel like that. yeah mm. I'm, I'm not totally on but um but yeah the uh i would never do late parlor again i would never work the late shift they have an early shift and they have a late shift i would never work the late shift uh like for a couple of reasons one by the end of 
I would by the I would say by the end of the fourth or fifth day, I was toast. Um, and I and the, the thing is, they you can have them video you performing, and I have those videos. But the performances they videoed were my last two performances on the last day. Mm. So they gave those to me, and you know I watched them, and then I threw the. Uh, the thumb drive in the trash. Um, and it was funny because I, I had a, a, a friend of mine, magician friend, and she told me after watching my performance, I think it was my second performance uh, on the last night that she attended. She says, I have some notes. <laughs> and, <laughs> and she didn't have oh, any good notes. And, and I was a bit puzzled, but the truth is in my state of mind or lack of, um, I didn't really know any better. I just thought, well, I, I mean, it's the same stuff I've been doing all week, you know? Um, and I watched the performance and I, I honestly, I was embarrassed. Um, so I will not uh, do late again at the castle be, uh, because if you do, if you do early, I mean, your last, I think the last show, for early ends, like in the 10 PM area, which would be about 1 PM over here. I can handle that, but ending at one 30 to 2 PM over there. And it, you know, it really being like five over here. This uh, is great advice for me. You know, like, oh boy. Goodness, great yeah. advice. And, and I will also tell you, there seems to be a greater, uh, blood alcohol level. Yeah, I've heard they get the sloppy at the castle big time, right? Uh, I, well, just I'm saying the, the later hours, there yeah. seems to be yeah. more of that. You mm, know, sure. you've got the people who are, I mean, they're they're hanging till two for a yeah. reason, um, and and the reason is not solely magic. Yeah. Um. So I would do that, and that's I met Brendan at the Magic Castle. Brendan Dooley, who's in there, uh, he was working. Um, he was working early parlor. And I was working late, so uh, we would uh, we had conversations in uh, you know in the transfer uh, to me doing my show from him ending his to me doing mine, and another thing is if you perform early, you will do all of your shows. If you perform late, there's no guarantee that you will do all of your shows because they may not have enough people. Um, but we'll tell you that uh, they did have me, they, they were about to cancel a show. Uh, there's, we just don't have a lot of people. And then the girl comes in and she says to me, she says, okay, um, we're, we're going to try to do this show. Uh, Nicholas Cage is downstairs <laughs> and uh, we're going to try to get him to come up to your show. Uh, and they did. And he sat fourth row and after the show came down and passing by me, shook my hand and said, great show. You're a wizard. Uh, so as you say, I, I have been <laughs> in that quote, Nicholas Cage, that was worth it. you're a wizard. So uh, dig this. I sold Nicholas Cage a card trick in <laughs> 1990 something. And he did it in the movie Zandali. He performed the rising card. Oh, cool. Yeah. Yeah. I had him in my promo too. Doug, thanks for the magic. So, so now great. I was my first magic consultant. There you go. It's and funny how like all the actors, there's like this whole thing between them and Kevin Bacon. It seems like Nicolas Cage seems to be like the seven degrees of Nicolas Cage in the magic realm. Like it is. <laughs> it was so cool. His girlfriend came back the next day and bought more magic for his birthday. He was like, he really likes that magic. I was like, it, what's so funny uh, about about him is he, I'm not. <sighs> He, he's an actor. He's a good actor, but actor. he plays himself pretty much. I mean, he, <laughs> he, all of his characters are very much himself. So when he came by and talked to me, it, it was just like I was in one of he's his like movies. from the Valley Girl. He, that know, guy. I was, I'm like, oh, we're in National Treasure. This is cool, you know. Uh, that, I mean, that's what it felt like to me. It was it was as though that's what we were doing because um, it just sounded like that's who I was interacting with. See, my comedy yeah. brain went somewhere totally different. It was like, it was amazing. Like, he went into the men's room, came out looking like John Travolta, then broke into a car and stole the Declaration of Independence. Like, the guy is just himself. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. Like, the, yeah. 
Nicolas Cage and the Ryan Reynolds of the world getting to play yourself, but it's just, that's just what the people want. Yeah. But, yeah. you know, what's that movie where he is a wizard? Or he... Oh, that was called Next or something, wasn't it? Where he's like this mentalist who can see oh, X yeah. amount of time in the future. That was a cool movie. No, there, there's cool. another one. Is it, there's another one where he like has an apprentice wizard and like, but it's real magic and you have to have like certain things for the magic to be able to, work like thick leather boots and you know so Renfield? the energy Renfield where he's uh not Renfield also but also magical magician magician apprentice, apprentice. Okay. thank you there we go. man that's I a the, how do I not oh oh man. but and then they said it's a Disney movie I, I uh, feel like uh, I turned it into a children's I don't know <laughs> no it's it's definitely not a children's movie but it was great like the fact that you got told you're a wizard by him who has played wizards um, oh, in movies that's cool i'll have to watch that movie now i don't think i've seen that <laughs> you can show your kids when they grow up see that guy he told me i'm a wizard sorry my i'm not going to say her name but uh this device over here she just decided to talk on her own uh, oh so, yeah real, real chatty household you got there but i don't have an answer <laughs> I, don't, I don't know what that means i'll tell you that is what i did though when i was doing uh virtual shows one of my favorite things to do was to uh, say, oh, this will be fun. And then I would say, Alexa. And I would say it really loud. And then I would give a <laughs> command. And then you'd hear all these devices on everybody. Yeah. I would unmute everybody so we could all hear it happen. Uh, um, subscribe to Brian Saint on YouTube or something like that. <laughs> if it were that easy, I would have done that. Yeah. Uh, write an AI I, review. I remember um, the Hamish and Andy podcast. It's an Australian two Australian guys over here, they did a test where they used to be on the radio first and they were like, back when um, you would ask your iPhone something, it wasn't recognized to a specific voice back then. So they said it on the air and they said, everyone driving, if your phone activates from us saying it, pull over. And then there, it was this whole thing where people were calling up saying like, we can see 20 cars pulled over on the road right now from you having just said that. They did a test on the radio saying, hey, Siri, Da, 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 da. And uh, it set off like so many people's phones back then. Um, can wow. you, you were telling us a story. So we dabbled quickly back air about how you went doing virtual shows and you were saying like combining your skills into a virtual show is, sure. is pretty ridiculous. But could you tell everyone the Google story? How like you had, you had the, the Google oh, wizards, the, the Microsoft, sorry, Microsoft Close enough. second best. <laughs> <laughs> wondering uh how the hell yeah tell them that because that was that's pretty damn cool so I'll, I'll say this up front i it, it was very funny when when uh when everything went locked down for a while i had a lot of good magician friends reach out to me now i i'll make this very clear years earlier i had actually done a few magic shows for groups over skype so I had some tricks that I did. So when we went on lockdown, you know, I wasn't really thinking about that, but I'm like, well, I know that's an option for me. But what I thought was great was all these, uh, all these good friends of mine were calling me up and we'd just be talking, you know, in our, in our little hunkered down areas. And he, and, uh, and they all said the same thing. They're like, can, can you keep a secret? <laughs> yeah sure sure because i've got this I'm, great idea i'm thinking i'm thinking of trying something out and I'm like really really what what are you thinking of trying out I said well i i don't want this to get out because i don't want other magicians copying it but i'm thinking of creating a virtual show and you know and this is like the, you know the sixth person telling me this i'm like really uh, and I, promise, I remember I won't, I won't tell anybody I remember that. I remember the month where we just saw every one of our friends post big announcement. I'm yeah. now offering virtual shows. It was a, it was a, <laughs> late March to, eight, to early April of 2020. So yep. the thing is, I just kind of, I kind of held back because I said this, this thing, you know, maybe over in a month. So I, I'm just going to hang back and, and whatever. Um, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But then I started seeing guys do this thing where they were they were jumping on Facebook Live and they were doing a free virtual show. So I was tuning in, and I don't have I don't have it here, but they were doing SpongeBob routine, 
so they have two sponge balls. They had them sitting on the table and they would take the one. So now, um, so we'll, we'll pretend this is your hand and this is my hand. And now what? I'm going to put one in my hand and one's going to be in your hand. And watch the one from my hand disappears and it appears in your hand. They had two come out. And they were doing that. And I honestly believe they were expecting the same reaction. Um, and I, I just said, no, no, this doesn't work. And I started going down the list of tricks that I know. And I'm just thinking, most of these don't work. Even pick a card. It doesn't seem to be as fair uh, doing it in a Zoom setting. So um, I I brought in uh, Brent Braun to uh, help consult for me because we'd worked on Fool Us. He'd also worked on a live show that I did. Um, I brought him in and we and I'll I will um, I'll tell you something he said. I, I I spun it into kind of my own words and just kind of added my own stuff to it. But imagine it this way. Let's assume that um, you are you could still do live shows. If you have a virtual show and a live show, they're the same price. There's no difference except one is live and one is virtual, or one's in person, one is virtual. Why would anyone want to see your virtual show? If you can answer that question then you'll have a good virtual show, or you can at least start the process of creating a good virtual show. So what I did is I started putting together all these tricks where the majority of them could not be done in person, using things to my advantage. Like for example, if I said, you know, got a uh, Rubik's cube here and uh, check this out, I'm gonna solve this cube. So. I, uh, see, and I solved it in one second. And, and making it that and just saying, now you see, mm. There could be someone right over here that just switched the cubes for me. Thank you. You know, and I bring it back, uh, you know, <laughs> whatever. and then, um, you know, doing all these things. And that's what I did. I, I, I started playing with, uh, you know, uh, with everything I'll even try to do. Like, uh, you know, you could do uh, you could do lapping. Mm. You see, yeah, just, by, just by dropping the, the cube because I, I, you know, caught it down here. Of course, if I really wanted to vanish it, you know, then I would do this in a virtual show. Just squeeze and cube. That's what I'm talking about. That. Um, so, Hang on. What the fuck just happened? <laughs> all right. You can watch the replay, Josh. Yeah. Oh, my God. Put in slow -mo. But, Anyone uh, listening to this, just go and watch this on video form. Just for that moment. Anyway, keep going. There you go. Slow mo. That was ridiculous. Um, oh, so anyway, wow. I, I show you that because I, I really... I, I, I really wanted to have those moments. Now, granted, if you saw that live, yeah, I mean, if you were in this room with me, that would suck. I'm just letting you know, it would be terrible. But here, it's really good. So, and I, and I find it funny when some magicians say, no, that's cheating. And I'm like, if you had a trap door on stage, that's also cheating. So dumb when magicians say, you know, mm. <laughs> you, like, you use the venue that you have to your advantage. So what I did is not only was I doing that, I was doing pre-recorded videos. 40% of my virtual show was pre-recorded. That blows my mind. Um, so cool. and, but you didn't realize it was pre-recorded. Uh, Cause I would be switching between live and I would be switching between multiple cameras. Can, can you explain would... what one of those segments might've been? Was it sure. like a so, do as I do or something? Or... I would say, for example, let's, uh, let's switch to the close up camera and I would hit a button here and it would switch to another camera angle, but that camera angle was pre-recorded. Yeah. Nice. So they felt they were watching it. And then the cool thing was when it would switch back to me here, that would also be pre-recorded. Whoa, <laughs> but they would think, oh, you know, they're not even if they thought this was pre recorded, they wouldn't think this was pre recorded. And then, mm. um, I had all these, all these things in the show where, and I would bring people on, you know, I could do picture in picture, so the person would be here, and uh, you know, I, I learned all the tech for that. But then at the end of the show, I um, I had this thing at right after using someone in the show. For someone and someone that everyone recognized, then it was this really cool thing where I just took a bow. I said, "Thank you so much. Glad you guys enjoyed the show." And then my my screen froze, 
and went, oh, screen froze and the audio wasn't working anymore. And then suddenly it turned green and I pulled back and it was a green screen and I was sitting on my couch. I said, I enjoyed watching this show with you. And that was the end of the show. <laughs> so I did that. This wow. is true. I did that for Microsoft. The first show I'm giving people a lot of ideas here to you. No, no. Yeah. I did the show for Microsoft and I got a message that said the whole team is now in their own video, video chat or video call. And they are uh, they're debating on whether or not any of the show was happening live um, because there were so and it. And I should point out because uh, I it's very important for you to hear this. There's a segment 10 minutes from the end where I show that everything could have been pre-recorded. So I actually tip the scales. I show you for the first time that, Hey, maybe this camera over here has been fake the whole time. Wow. And then there's even a scene where I say, in fact, if it was fake, not only could, you know, I could not only could I do this, but, and then suddenly I'm standing on a beach holding a lightsaber and Darth Vader standing next to me. <laughs> <laughs> and it was and it was real. It was a hundred percent real. Uh, is actually it was really Darth Vader standing there, not, not you know someone dressed as Darth Vader, but we were really standing on a beach holding lightsabers, um, and uh, yeah. So we uh, there were just all those moments, and I just looked for those moments in the show. Um, if you know the 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 thing that you um, you know the type of mentalism effects that you'd see on on the world's greatest magic specials. Put your finger here, go up and move over and come down. Mm. I would use a screenshot of Zoom of a gallery view. Start on nice. start over here, or start on any person uh, whose name begins with this letter or whatever, and then move Love up. It. And and it became this really cool thing. And then they would end up on a couch that I made fun of because I said, Oh, and there's a, and one person clearly was not in the shot. When we took this picture, they were off somewhere else because the show wasn't interesting enough at the very end. That's what they would all end up on. That would blow up. And then I would stick my head in on that screen. So, um, we, so wow. again, all these, uh, I'm, I, I'm saying a lot, so please stop me. But that was, uh, that was a lot of what my virtual show was. It was just me. <sighs> tackling all these things that you can't do live and giving people a very different experience. Well, all those see, ideas are absolutely phenomenal. Like, is, there, is there any opportunities that people will be able to see that in the near future or is it captured anywhere or is it just straight up like it was a privilege yeah. folks paid for and you can get that by hiring yourself? It, it's not available for anyone to just go see it right now. Um, I'm not saying I would never do that. Um, Does the phone ever ring for a virtual show these days? You ever get people? I did. So, so I, my wife and I moved uh, in November, and the day before we closed on our house, this is true. The day before we closed, uh, I did two virtual shows from my office. So I couldn't pack up my office. By the way, um, uh, could not. Uh, so I had to leave my office all set up. I did you had my to get virtual those shows then. <laughs> But I'll show you what I did. Uh, boy, my voice cracked. I don't know if that's good or bad. Um, I now have a curtain in my office that is, I'm trying to point. There we go. Yeah. I now have a curtain in my office that I'm able to uh, have set up. Because I have, uh, if you've heard of Jeff Jones and his amazing backdrops that he sells set up in 30 seconds, I have one of his backdrops. But in the, in the previous office, which was half the size of the one I'm in here, setting that up uh in that space was a nightmare because it's amazing it packs down into nothing uh and that thing was 15 feet wide by nine feet tall so it was tough wow. to set that up i said i don't want to set it up when i come i've got this huge wall over here let's just make a black curtain that curtain opens up um there's nothing on the other side of it so I have free reign. If I wanted my virtual show, I could open that curtain up and there'd be something back there. Um, you know, I've wanted to open it. Like I thought about, why don't I open that up? And there'd be a window there that I actually open and uh, interact with the outside world in some way. And then at the very end of the show, peel the window off the wall. And it's just a wall or, or you know, something. I'm just thinking all, all kinds of 
possibilities. Um, that seems like its own product that that could live on past this whole thing, you know. Like that sounds like a a movie that people yes. are interacting with at the same time. Like, yes, it, it it really it really was very interactive. I mean, I brought on a, a lot of people to help with that. Uh, Garrett Thomas uh, even uh, gave some ideas, and you know Garrett's brain, uh, mm. and how, how clever he is, um, and. Uh, it just uh, really just got some great ideas from a lot of people. And, um, you know, my, my video editing skills, since I did that for a long time, that the, really came into play um, for this show. But I did do this for a magic convention. Uh, I think it was called the Comedy Magic Convene. Uh, Matt Four was the one who um, who did that. And he said, I would just like for you to talk about virtual shows. Could you do maybe 30 minutes and talk? afterwards about virtual. So I did a lot of what I'm talking about here. Um, but uh, who knows, there, there may be an opportunity to do that again in the future. Wow. And before we go, what um, what are you pushing at the moment? You, I, I've seen some stuff on Instagram of you using your baby to um, promote your some live shows coming up, yeah. which is great. Um, any, any shows coming up people can find you at? Uh, or is that well, already done? I, I don't do a lot of ticketed events. I do uh, very few in a year. So most of my stuff is private corporate events, but um, I'm going to be for anyone that's uh, near the Charlotte area. I'm going to be at the magic canvas um, that is in Indian land, South Carolina, but that, which is just um, that's 30 minute drive from center city, Charlotte. So um, but I'm there. Uh, my, my book, almost believable. Uh, we have just added the link today to my site. So uh, this is a great time to test if it works, uh, but it's uh, my website, briansaint.com um, slash almost believable. That's the, that's the, and it's uh, really, it's, I call it a book. It's really my lecture notes, um, but um, it's, I'm very happy that's out. It got a great response and it's a PDF uh, because we sold out of the printing much faster than I was anticipate selling. Um, and uh, I haven't really done, uh, yes, that's it right there. I haven't really done a lot of lectures, uh, very, very few, but uh, that's something I would like to do more of. Yes, that's me. Oh, that's on uh, that's Brent's got, page. Got, it is sold out on Brent's page. I got the wrong um, page there. Yeah, that's, it's sold out there. So right. well, don't everyone can go in. And Definitely go search for it. Look, Brian's website is in the link below, as is his um, social pipe handle, the Brian Saint. And um, oh, we're trying again here. There we go. Look, from all the knowledge we've heard from Brian, I don't know why you wouldn't go and get this book. You know, is that card trick you showed us before the the stream in there? No, that's not on in the book. <laughs> that was a juicy. Before the show, we got to have our own virtual magic show. He fooled all of us. So I'll, I'll send you a. I'll send you a full Doug Con trophy too. He's, yeah, <laughs> he's he's a. That Brian is a true in a book down the road. We'll see. A true, a true professional. Look, we we're out of time already, but you know we're just going to have to have you back sometime. You're you're a gem, Brian. Thank fun. you for coming on. You. And um, so everyone can go and find you in the social pipes and on your website. But we have to end the episode like any good episode would, and that is with leaving Brian with the final word. So we want to thank you for coming on. And ladies and gentlemen, here is the final word. <laughs> So I started thinking, what could I possibly say here? And uh, I, I think this is probably the, the best advice I can give. If you watched my recent Fool Us appearance, you saw um, a story that I told Brooke was a story about when my case fell behind me when I was performing. And really, every prop that I had in that case uh, just went out into the first several rows of the audience. And this was 10 minutes into the show. And I, and I turned to the person that I was with, you know, and she was free, like what just happened, turned to the audience. And I said, just to let everyone know, um, after this trick, we usually take a brief intermission. And it got a huge laugh from the audience. And the, this trick ended with the, the spectator. She went back to her seat and then uh, the band that was playing before I was on helped me get all of my props back in my case. I continued the show. Something very interesting happened to me. 
I suddenly got into a mindset of, well, nothing worse than that can happen. And I started taking more chances than I've ever taken in front of an audience. It was the most relaxed I have ever been. And so my final word uh, to anyone watching who's doing regular performing, do not uh, get tied up in trying to be perfect. I am very much a perfectionist. And that absolutely slapped me out of being a perfectionist for at least that performance. And from every performance since then, I have always had that kind of floating around in my mind. Maybe I'm not as, as relaxed as I was in that performance. But uh, as I said, I took many, many chances. They cut that part out on TV. But um, afterwards, I was approached by probably a dozen or so people. Uh, I had been referencing the case falling ever since it happened. I referenced it throughout the show. Uh, and after the show, about a dozen people came up and said, hey, can we get your card? And just a question, do you do the case thing every show or is that just a special request? Um, <laughs> And so that alone to me, uh, that could not have been a better lesson. I mean, I, I and I know it's on video because the guy showed it to me. I really need to try to get that video just so I can see it for myself because I know my face uh, probably turned purple in that moment. I mean, it was so far past red, but the relaxing, the, the relaxation that came from that moment uh, immediately after. Uh, I never had an audience more with me and I had was never more with an audience than I was in that moment. So uh, do not be scared to get out there and not be perfect. Um, you, you may find some of your best bits just out of doing that. So there you go. My final word. I'm going to stare at my fool us trophies again. Thanks for listening. It's time for us to disappear now. Disappear now. But we'll see you again on the next episode of The Magic Guys.